If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. In this episode of Mind Pump, Ooh, for the yay. first 42 minutes with your introductory conversation, we talk about our new sponsor, Life Aid. Life Aid. They make good uh, good drinks there. I like the Party Aid one. That's my favorite one. I like Life Aid. Yeah, they're good stuff. Yeah, if you go to lifeaidbevco.com forward slash mind pump, you can get two cans of your favorite Life Aid type drink for 99 cents. It's basically free. Hell yeah. Basically free. Then we have a little debate. Would you rather freeze or burn? <laughs> Which one do you choose? That's the obvious one. Then we talked about our 4th of July getaway. Uh, we were up in the mountains of Carmel. It was beautiful up there, and we discovered a camouflaged spy house. <laughs> it was really weird. There were a couple voodoo dolls of Justin Kinda up there. Kind of creepy. Yeah. Uh, we also mentioned my hangover prevention remedy. It includes activated charcoal and Organifi's green juice. Love that green juice. We are sponsored by Organifi. If you go to Organifi.com forward slash mind pump and enter the code mind pump, you'll get 20% off. Then we talked about the Miss America pageant, eliminating the swimsuit portion. What? Justin's, Have you lost your mind? Justin's not going to watch anymore. <laughs> awful idea. Find I out turning though, off the TV. How we would and then that. we came up with our own version of what we think the Miss America should look like. Then we get into the questions. The first question was, what is the importance of rest period timing for certain goals? For example, what if you just want to build muscle or what if you want to just maximal strength or if you want lots of endurance? How should you manipulate your rest periods to maximize each of those? The next question is, when you're in a calorie deficit, what things dictate how much fat you lose versus how much muscle you lose? There's a big problem when people try to lose weight and that problem is losing muscle, which just slows down the metabolism. How do you prevent that? And the next question was, this individual is working out six days a week, high volume, crazy training, but now would like to work out three to four days a week because they've been listening to our episode for a little while and they know that mm. might be better off for them to do so. Maybe how can they try. How can they scale it back without gaining lots of body fat? Mm. And the final question, if we were all on death row, why would we be on death row? And what would our last meal be? Because we're pretty gangster. That's right. Also, this month... MAPS Anabolic, the foundational MAPS program, the program to start them all, the best strength and muscle building program we have, uh, is 50% off, half off. So we took the total price, cut it in half. You can find it at mindpumpmedia.com. We also have MAPS bundles on that same site. MAPS bundles where we take multiple MAPS programs, we put them together, and we discount them like 20 or 30% off. For example... Our super bundle is a year of exercise programming and combines several MAPS programs that you follow in unison to get yourself to look sexy within a year. Yeah. So you can find that bundle and all the bundles and the 50% off MAPS Anabolic at mindpumpmedia.com. I feel a little, uh, little phlegmy this morning. Flem <sighs> phlegmy? Yeah. Is that a thing? Phlegmy? phlegmy. Yeah. Can I be phlegmy? <clears throat> yeah, so <clears throat> phlegmy is to be of phlegm mm. or Flemish. Wow. Wait, no, Flemish is a... Isn't that from a country? That, that, I feel like, yeah, that's a different meaning. Aren't you from another country? What country oh, is it, I'm Doug? Flemish. Can I be phlegmy, Doug? Is that a thing? No. You can be flamey. No, not flamey. Fl <laughs> you definitely can be flamey. I feel yeah. phlegmy. Mm. Flemmy. Maybe. Did you, did you happen to share anything that I had put my saliva on? Whoa. <laughs> like a joint? <laughs> Possibly. Yeah, you might be getting oh, sick you then. Why, wow, you're sick you again? Sick. No, you I'm just flammies. kidding. I just want to scare you for that. Gee, you did. <laughs> <laughs> no, like, I'm fine. I was going to say, you know, remember when we <sighs> first started, I used to get sick a lot. Mm -hmm. I don't ever get sick anymore, dude. You, you're ill, but you weren't always sick. Yeah, Sometimes you're illest. Sick, but you're ill. You know what I, you know what I attribute that to? Mm. Party aid. Party aid, party aid uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, I can go hard and I can <laughs> That's right. recover harder. That's right. Yeah. That's gonna yep. be that was a terrible <laughs> commercial. Yeah. That was... Actually, actually, like when we first met with the guy from what was his name? Dude, you can't, you can't, you can't do that. Fuck up Aaron's name like that. Aaron, yeah. I love him. He's a great I love guy. Him. Just yeah, but his name. I'm always skeptical with like you know drinks like this or whatever. But yeah. you look at the ingredients and everything; it's legit. 
Yeah, man. It's no artificial sweetener. Well, you know, it's before we no. met caffeine. And what added. I mean is like the ingredients are like what he puts in there for party aid are the things you would definitely want if you were going hard and you want to yeah, what are recover those main better. Ingredients? Like milk thistle is in there, 5 yeah. HTP is in there. Like these are all things that help your brain deal with the. So you can regain that clarity uh, from the fogginess from the night before. Huh? It just recover better. Like milk thistle, for example, helps your liver detoxify. Mm. It's also my favorite tasting one, too. Yeah. Party Aid? Yeah, yeah. Well, you it, know that one's the one taste. that I picked, so uh-huh. you have to pick a different one. I don't know. Well, I like Life Aid the best. No, That's I think Party Aid's flavor. Me, You're Life Aid. No, did no, they, no, no. No, I'm Life Aid. Did they, Life Aid. Did they start out with Life Aid? That was the first one, or was it... I, I thought he, he'd mentioned it was golf first, right? No, no, no. That, golf no, wasn't no, first. A different oh. one. No, golf wasn't first. Yeah. Life Aid was first, I think. Yeah. Life, Life Aid was first. You no... Know, which one's the you bl- did the commercial with it, but Party Aid's the one that I that I said was the one that I liked the most. Oh, mm. that's yeah. The, yeah, the the black can. Yeah, that's Life Aid. Aid. That's the fit. That's the first one. That's Fit Aid. That fit was Aid. A, Fit Aid was the very first one, and I remember the first time I ever saw it. I saw it at a CrossFit gym, mm-hmm. and and I remember tasting it, and I was like, oh, I really like this. And I looked at the back of it, and I'm like, oh, forty five calories. Yeah, I looked at the back of it, and I'm like, oh, this is better than a Red Bull. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, mm-hmm. Red Bull's got a bunch of other garbage inside. But they but they don't sweeten it with artificial stuff. Yeah, which no. is good. No. Right, that's what I mean. Like it's but it, Fit Aid, I think has the branching amino acids, and I can't remember what else is there. The Party Aid's the one that I've been using because mm-hmm. I like that. The milk thistle tyrosine for neurotransmitters, 5-HTP. It's like a good... I know you've been buying them. We we're supposed to get a case of it sent to us with the refrigerator. I've been so drinking them. And you've been buying them every Yeah, I actually morning. like yeah. them a lot. No, no, no I, like, I like them too. I really like... So I had been told... First thing I heard about it when I was working out at a buddy's gym who told me like, you got to meet the guys from Life Aid. They're really fucking cool. That was the first time I heard it. Then I heard it again when we were hanging out at the Spartan, and we met some other. Uh, remember the dudes from uh, Barbell, the Barbell show mm-hmm. that we. I can't think of their name of their show. What's their show called? Bar Beyond oh, the Barbell. There you Beyond go. The barbell, Beyond yeah. the Barbell. Those guys were kept kept ranting and raving about the life of guys. Ben Greenfield. It must have been like five people later. I was like, we have to meet these guys because yeah. we really weren't. We I didn't mean, want to do it. We wanted nothing to do with. Yeah, we were so anti anything to do with supplements or energy drink. Yeah. Anything, anything. We were so against it that we like just ignored it for such a long mm-hmm. period of time. By the time I get about five people, they're like, you need to meet with these guys. You will, you're going to like them. And sure as shit, the first time we all hung out, I was like, oh, this is our people for mm-hmm. sure. So mm-hmm. love the message, love the brand, love the guys behind the brand. Um, doing some cool stuff, dude. And they're just growing, man. They're everywhere. They're in Whole Foods, and uh, I see it like all over the place. Every gas station I'm at now, too. As That's well. a tough business to succeed in, too. I can't. Dude, it was so impressive because, like Adam was saying, like I used to see these little uh, coolers that they would put in gyms or CrossFit gyms or functional training kind of like gyms. Uh, just initially to get the word out, and like trainers sort of adopted it, and then. I saw it grow like over the years like crazy. I just think it's really clever how they brand it with like each each one like the golf raid, the life aid, the party aid. And yeah. each one of those has like two to three grams of a supporting supplement for what that person probably would need. So if yeah, you're into golf, like, you're doing this. For the function. Right. Yeah, yeah. We're not we're not talking about just getting cracked out and, and energetics. So like that's where we're gonna get energetic. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so energetic. <laughs> I got so cat all you gotta do is just flood the caffeine in there, and that's you know, usually the formula. No, we don't use that caffeine word enough. and sugar. Yeah, the word energetic is not used enough. Yeah, you know what I mean. Uh, like, be like, who oh, doesn't I, want to be energetic? Yeah, energetic. Yeah, I like that. I so like that word. now, now that we're working with them and stuff, we have a really cool uh, campaign that they're doing, and it's try two cans. So any two cans you want for ninety nine cents. So that's kind of cool. And you and you just go to our lifeaidbevco dot com forward slash mind pump. And there's a there's a landing page there, so people can go right through the landing page and then order it. So you get to try it out for, mm-hmm. and then you can't beat that, dude. Ninety nine cents. I mean, mm-hmm. they're losing on it, but that's what's dope is the product's so rad. That's when you know you got a solid product and a solid company. Is that, I mean, between shipping the pro- the cans alone itself are going to cost them almost that much money. So they're losing on that, counting on that. You know, a, a that greater people will like yeah, it. that a greater yeah. percentage of people will still mm-hmm. uh, like them, and you can actually get them shipped, which is nice. Which is why we could actually work with them because we can't do stuff. It's tough when we. I mean, we have um, you know the brew doctor and stuff that we get to do something with that they're in Whole Foods only. But most companies they don't ship mm-hmm. online because mm-hmm. of how expensive it is, but they actually do. Exactly. So excited about that one. I'm I'm just I'm just excited about the bathrobe you're wearing right now. <laughs> 
<laughs> trying to make a fashion statement. In the, yeah. in the gym. It's cold in here. It is cold. It's cold in we, here, and I had nothing in my- It's kind of a dad move right I'm, there. We can't, move. we cannot- so I don't give a shit. For the life <laughs> of us, cannot get the right temperature in any place we work. No. It just doesn't work that way. Right. It's either I mean, freeze or die of heat. Yeah. There's nothing in the middle. And I would no. rather freeze than die of heat. That's just where I'm at. I agree. See, I'm, so. not, I'm not even complaining. Like, I got no problem. Yeah. Rob it out. This, Wait a, this is okay. Wait a minute. It, it, that's a good question. Would you rather freeze to death mm. or die to death of heat? Uh, or burn to death. Yeah. Like, burn to death to or death? freeze to death? Freeze to death, for sure. <clears throat> uh, not only that, like, I'd rather be freezing cold I would than rather, super I th- hot. I think freezing to death would yeah. take longer to die. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, if I dropped you on the top of the Himalayas, yeah. how long yeah, would you last? Yeah, but I feel like you would, you, because it's cold, you would get numb. Like, you, would, it's so cold that you would numb and then die, right? right? Everything would We're slow down. Burning is like your skin melting and you're cooking. Once it's melted, it's yeah. gone. You don't feel nothing. Your, your nerves yeah, are done. Yeah, the process of it being melted, though. He's first got to burn the hair and burn the layer of skin off. I feel off like you die faster in the, so in the much fire more comfortable. than you would in the in the. I think. Yeah, but now you're saying you're on fire. I thought we were just like overheated. You know what I mean? Yeah. Why like, do we have to take like it? To, why did you have to take it to the extreme of yeah, dying? Yeah, yeah. Why can't you just say, "Would oh, you yeah. rather be for, really for, fucking cold, yeah. or so hot?" Right. Like, which one would you rather be? Uh, well, it depends on the temperature. Like, would you? Yeah. Would you? <laughs> well, give them realistic. All right. Me. Fine. Uh, you're would you rather out, be at 104 degrees. You got to walk be 33 degrees. You got to walk five miles in 120 degree weather, or or five miles in 10 degree weather. 10 degree. 10. Yeah, also. naked right. both ways. No, that's not fair. Why? So here's the here's where, it, <laughs> bro. I can like mess with my internal core temperature. I, I can manipulate it myself. Oh god, now because yeah. he did Wim Hof. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have the powers. Justin's immune. He wins one ice does bath Wim Hof, challenge. Wim, yeah. one ice bath. And I'm does in. Wim Hof not work for heat? You know, I don't know about that. I've never tried it, but that's I can't stand. Thought. I can't stand heat, so I don't know. That might. Well, be. think about it this way. I like we, the heat. I'm as, good with it. As humans, okay. There's a lot more that we can do to warm ourselves up than to cool ourselves off. Like you can only yeah. take off so much clothes. If it's 120 right. outside and you're completely you're talking about without technology, you see, but it's all technology, right? Right. Yeah. But we, we are allowed. We are allowed to use that. Clothes are technology, well, right? I said, it, that's, like I technology. have to be able to jump in water. You know, if I'm like super super hot, like I got to be around water. Yeah. Dude, or I'm, I'm just like. But you, if you're in a cold environment, you can bundle up and cover up. Like if you're in a super hot environment, you can yeah. only you cool can't sp- get away from. Yeah, it. yeah, you can't get away from it. Right, well, down. how about this? Here's a new one. Walking five miles in 120 degree heat, wearing winter clothes. Or walking five miles in ten degree weather, wearing summer clothes. <laughs> yeah, that's. I mean, again, it's gonna go back to the the cold. Ten degrees, wearing shorts and a t- in a tank top. Bro, I've I've done thirty below. You know, in Chicago. Have you really? Yeah, I've never done that. It's horrible. I haven't been thirty. What's that like? It's it's piercing. Like you can't like. You can't even like ignore it. You know, you're just walking. It penetrates through whatever you're wearing. It doesn't matter unless you have like a down coat, which I found out later. That's the move. And uh, I was like wearing three sweatshirts and like two jeans and like I just is that thought, because like, how the doubling triple the down up. holds the holds the heat inside or what? what yeah, it keeps it. Yeah, it just keeps everything. Yeah, your your core temperature within. But like, it's hella down. Yeah, it's down. <laughs> it's it, down. It, it, it like I don't know what it is about like um, the. The wind factor is the wind chill factor that it just really just gets right through. No, that's you what to, makes to the bone. I imagine Chicago is like up there with some of the coldest places to be. Yeah, because yeah, it's right off of the the like Canada, so you get all that cold front from Canada coming up the lake, and then off the lake you get that wind that just blows right back. Your teeth through shatter Chicago. right away just when you go outside. You just, <laughs> yeah. Do you guys no, hear? just ah, oh, like you brace like so hard because like you Does just it freeze you just your nose like hairs, tense up all your muscles. I heard if you like oh yeah, breathe in, oh, you feel freeze. Face, it sucks. Yeah. Wow, you yeah, know what's your eyes and everything is hard to see. Do you know what's remarkably. Uh, good for cold and hot. What material? Hmm. The mind pump T-shirts in oh, yeah. heat <laughs> and thermal cold. regulated. Dude, you're like, hustling right now. It's like uh, hustling. It's <laughs> it's which uh, one are stay authentic? Uh, it's the month especially blessed. when you oh, buy yeah, like for, six of them and you layer them. Right. You know if what you saying? wear six, that's what <laughs> that's I'm trying true. to say. You can if it's really hot, you only need one. If depending on the weather, you add the shirts and they provide protection. My pump T-shirt. I mean, that's a good call. Absolutely. Hey, so what did you do, Justin, last night after you left us? So we partied we went last to, night. Uh, to Scotts Valley in 
checked out a little bit of fireworks. But basically, <laughs> he went home yeah, and did sparklers. We did sparklers. <laughs> it was like, hey, himself- look at the, <laughs> it's in the air. You know, you kind of see him, and you, yeah, made, you made, didn't make a big deal. You out made of it, it sound like that. you went somewhere. No, like, hey, what'd you do, Sal? I went to San Jose and. <laughs> You know, I feel like the boys. I, I feel like the boys are having more fun chasing the dogs around and making s'mores, even though they couldn't have fireworks. Yeah, they probably were. Yeah. I know we had, we had like uh, great intentions going in, and we're just all super just tired. Bro, so. when you got kids, man. Yeah. Because yeah. you you guys are you know chasing around. Your kids are pretty good though. They're not they're not bad kids. Well, I should hope not. Yeah, they're you know, good kids. Have to beat them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's why they're good. Yeah, <laughs> no, I don't, don't want to do that. No, they're very well behaved. Oh, good. Yeah, yeah. dude, uh, Ethan is just so fun to talk to, dude. <laughs> he's at, get, he's, that's right. He was chatting it up with you. For he's a while. at that age right now where I love to talk to kids around that <laughs> age, dude. Like, give or take two or three years, where he's at right now. This, like, they feel like their brains are moving so fast, and they. They're really like I feel. I feel like they're really intelligent at this point. You know, what I'm saying like, up and, up until that point, it's kind of like da, 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 kids running around trying to figure things yeah. out. But like now, he's like start. You could see him trying to process things, right? And so I love yeah. to challenge them in just a conversation. Like they'll be, you'll have be talking with them, and you ask instead of just letting them give you an answer, you ask them challenging questions like, "Well, why? Why do you say that? Or why do you think that?" Hear how they uh-huh. and, then, and to hear how they articulate it is really great. And he was showing me. Um, he really wants to be a YouTube star. He did a bunch of stop motion videos. <laughs> yeah, so his phone is just full of all these stop motion videos. I mean, he must have had thirty in there, and he made me watch them all. Right, so I'm like, <laughs> so yeah, he's not gonna let you leave till you watch like to the very end of each video. It's too. great. What's great though is like he's really into it, and you can tell he's put a lot of time and effort yep. into making them, and he's into improving on it. Like, and so <laughs> that's, that's he's good. like a couple years away from working for us. I think. <laughs> I, think so. I think. I think so too. Yeah, he came way over. under minimum wage. <laughs> we'll, we'll Pay him in goldfish. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> He's going through the, the pictures. Some of the stop fish. motion pictures, and a, a couple of them are blurry. And Justin's like, "Yeah, I know you need to work on some of that, the the some of those blurry ones." And I looked at him. I said, "You know, you should ask your dad for the iPhone 10. Because yeah. <laughs> like, dick. <laughs> <laughs> now you got that in his head. Now he's like, yeah, dad, when we get my iPhone 10. Yeah, thanks, <laughs> trying, to never, trying to take this yeah. serious. Thanks, Adam. <laughs> yeah. Dude, Uncle, you miss Uncle Adam will buy it for you. You missed out, bro, on the the, the secret house. Oh, the you didn't one. see it. So was it up the I think I saw it. It was oh, up the mountain. No, 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 no. With the swing. No, no, no. Yeah. yeah. The yeah. camel house. So there's a so we we rented this. I didn't like go up there, but I saw that. We that rented was up there. this um, like amazing home in the mountains of Carmel, right? And it's this huge house, it's all this land. Yeah. It was a trippy house the way it was put together. It was like a separate very interesting. room that was separate downstairs. And you could tell the people that made it were eclectic and it was it was, it was actually a really, really cool place to stay. But then when we're out in the like the patio area where the, where the fire is, if you look up the mountain, you know I think Adam pointed it out. He's like, "There's like a house up there, but it looks camouflaged." You know those old, like, you know those Vietnam movies where they like cover equipment with like green. Mm. They're not blankets, but they almost look like they're like camo to, to yeah. hide them from helicopters or stuff. Fly, yeah, like flying nets over. and yeah, yeah, like yeah, yeah exactly, netting. exactly. Yeah, yeah. So we saw some of that. We're like, "Is there a house up on the?" Like, what is that? And I'm kind of tripping. I'm like, is there someone up there? Like, what is that? So He's got like a scope. Yeah. Just yeah. Like looking at everybody. So later on in the day. <laughs> you should hear this creature. No, I, I say. <laughs> so later on in the day, Adam and I are like, he's like, I'm like, dude, let's go and see. Because there was a trail that goes upstairs and there was like this landing, but it looks like that's where the stairs end. And Adam's like, no, he goes, there's a trail further than that. And he goes, I wonder if that goes to the house up there. Uh-huh. So we're like, let's fucking do it. So we get on the the stairs, go all the way up, get up to the landing, go up this trail, and sure enough, it leads. First, there's a sign that says private property. All over there's private, no trespass. Private property, don't trespass, don't trespass. So now I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> You're like, we're still going. No, and so we're still going, but we're all like super. Yeah, we're like like uh, you're, you're gonna set off a trip. Bro, we're somewhere. not sure we're walking up on somebody else's house. We right? don't know what's like, going on. We're yeah. like we're like this like the we step on some landmines. It's like a mystery, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So we're going up there, and then we see the door, and Adam's like, "Oh shit!" He's like, "I think it's open." So <laughs> no, first we in. First we walk around. You guys we, are crazy. First we walk around. We look around the property up there, and sure enough, it's a like a almost like a tree house up in the mountain. Yeah, with camouflage covering it. Yeah, it looked kind of like how hunters they set up like some some little from far shack, away, right? Yeah, that they can so sit we're like, and snipe. What the fuck is this, right? Yeah. This is big though. It's no, got- no, no. This you're gonna get creeped oh, it's out. Even bigger. You're okay. gonna get creeped out. All right, good. So we walk in. There's like 15 computer screens. 
up on what? the wall. And each one of them is an angle in the house that we were staying, and it's videotaping all of us. Shut the fuck up. No, I'm just kidding. That part's a lot. <laughs> I was like, son of a bitch. <laughs> I'm so glad I didn't spend the night there. Like, you assholes. <laughs> no, that part's a lie. Yeah. That last part was a lie. No, it's just a house. It's just like, like a man, <laughs> so many people are doing this. You know, yeah. I and told then you there about were, that story. That other yeah. fucking and then creep. There were, then there were pictures of all of us. And the other <laughs> <wall>. <laughs> And an X, an X was <laughs> covering like, oh your face. Oh my god! Justin. You guys made it out. I'm here to warn you. There was yeah. an X over your face. No, no, no. We didn't oh, see that. Shit. I said that afterwards to everybody downstairs. Me and Adam went down. Yeah. Fucking scared the shit out of everybody. Yeah. No, it's just a tree. It's like a treehouse type thing. But a, sure. like a full blown house. It's fucking Ki- sick. Kitchen. kitchen, bathroom, shower, bedroom. Oh, it's like, its own self sustained. But it's place, part huh? of it's part of the house. Weird. That was down there because then there's signs above everything like please turn off the lights when you leave, and so you could tell it's part of the Airbnb. Uh, so it was really cool though. So you could rent that and the big house. I yeah. think we did. Yeah, we had I think ac- we, had, we access had access to, to that. It. Weird. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. So the, so <laughs> what I think first off we had access to it. it's awesome, but the reason why I think it was <laughs> so here's the other part of it cuz I'm like why are they camouflaging it? That's kind of weird. Yeah. So then we as we're leaving we look under the house and we're looking at the foundation and <laughs> Adam starts cracking up and he's like this is not up to code at all. Uh, <laughs> I'm like, I bet they built this shit and didn't tell anybody yeah. and put the camo on it so nobody sees that it's there, right. you know? That but, makes sense. <laughs> but it was really cool. Because it is. It's like a full... It's that, a full that's little, a mountain person. Uh, like, that, that, that's that's what we do. You oh, know, yeah. Like, you just... You do, like, yeah, you just put it up and, like, you and don't there, tell anybody about it. And yeah. it, there's a lot of effort. I mean, the, the trail is... They actually had these nice little brick stones that were... Yeah. And, the, like, little uh, solar panel lights. Uh, oh yeah, that led up the trail, and it was you could tell that they had somebody who cl- keeps it cleaned up so you can get all the way up there. But it definitely had a little creepy feel to it for sure. Mm. The old the old swing that was sitting on there. Oh, and then there was also the window to the kitchen in there because it was a small house. It was probably the size of this this room right here. Yeah, maybe even smaller. What about this. And then there was a window, and the window is looking into the mountain because the mountain keeps sloping up. And then there were all these little Easter Island, you know, Easter Island statues. The, yeah, the, yeah, yeah, the Moai. Yeah, okay, there you go. So there's a whole bunch of them, mm-hmm. like looking into the window. It was kind of cool. Creepy. Interesting. It was interesting. Creepy. Definitely the people. <laughs> creepy. It wasn't creepy, yeah. dude. It was a little creepy. Uh, if the cameras were there, yeah, it would have been creepy. Th- that's what they were, right? Yeah. There. Easter Island. Yeah. What are wow. they called? Moai? Yeah, I thought that's what they were called. What are they? What are they? What are they? No, they? It's a mystery. Yeah. It's, nobody knows why. And yeah, how? And like where did they come from? And because like even how did on the they island, get in there? So you just tell me that we we don't even know like what they that brought si- them. We don't even know what that signifies. And and you th- ancient- and you don't think that's creepy that it's up in a house like that? Yeah. Well, no, they, those were that's obviously cre- replicas. They didn't have yeah. the actual Easter no, island. No, I know, but that's what that's what makes <laughs> it creepy to me. It's a, uh, no people decorate. Maybe he's that. in the old you know ancient civilizations. Oh come on, bro! There was Buddhas. There was all kinds of stuff all over the place. But the actual Easter Island ones, they yeah, don't know the, why those are there. Are those called Moai? Doug, do you know? Okay. We'll find out. Well, I don't know. We'll so know. we don't know anything about we those? We'll never know. No, we will find out, though. We have Doug on the on the trail right now. <laughs> Doug's on the trail. Doug's on the trail. Don't fail us, Doug. Yeah, mm. I think I think you might have been wrong, oh, you Adam. Son you yeah. son of a bitch. Oh, he was right. Yes. Good job, Justin. Fucking guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what episode is number is this? Write it down. <laughs> yeah. Hey, no, I'm no, just kidding. It happens almost every time. Anyway, it's we fine. had a, we had a good time, dude. It was a good yeah. time. Good time over there. That was really nice place. That, that was a good call. Good good people. Mm-hmm. Good drinks. You have completely ruined uh, Moscow mules for me. I mean, that's I order them at bars all the time. Dude, the mind pumps mule. I mean, it's uh, it's a staple thing. The way you make them is better than anybody else, though. Well, uh, it makes it so. that's all I do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I started experimenting with, it. I started experimenting, I did this a long time ago uh, with other supplements. So way back in the day, you know, I used to be able to buy like branched amino acid powder and they'd flavor it with like all these chemicals and it tasted kind of sweet. Mm-hmm. I would make mixed drinks with that because I thought, <laughs> I thought it was better. Yeah. Than alcohol, so why not throw some BCAAs in there? Yeah, why see not? what happens. Anyway, it's not better than alcohol. Mm. By itself, <laughs> but I am trying to figure out a way to use uh, to to like we do the charcoal when we drink, <laughs> yeah, right to kind of well, offset some of that. Always, and we clutch. also have the gluten free 
uh tito's you know so tito's that's, that's a good call and the, then the other thing is the uh i've used also is the green juice uh i'll do that before and after a drink and then mm -hmm. before bed the gold juice from organifi mm -hmm. and i have yet to have a really shitty feeling following morning and then a party aid you know the next day right dude you got it you got it all <laughs> it's like we're fully covered now yeah, yeah, yeah. So i can't to go out and do stuff. i can't wait till we have the cases in there so we can use it like that more often because what we i haven't done is take like a party aid with us to like a trip like that to where i did have it afterwards yeah, I, yeah. i'm uh, you know there i've are been following the protocol that you set charcoal for what, did, what trip were we on when you for, that that was like ever since then i was like Oh shit! I can actually drink every once in a while now. Must have been Austin. You you gave us all pills. We were all I'll never forget it. We were all out somewhere. Mm -hmm. Oh, it was Austin. Yeah, it was Austin. It was Austin, and we were at that cool little swanky bar. Yeah, and we were all sitting out. And Sal comes out, and he's like, he tells everyone, we "Open were their up hands." Late that night. Yeah, he gives everybody two charcoal pills. Nobody even asked me anymore. We, they don't even question anymore. And I just give you guys stuff. Give well, because you're you, like, hoard, oh. you hoard everything. We're we're less like you're hoard. less you're less likely to like not share it than to fucking overshare. Well, so I if you give careful. me pills, I'm like, yeah, dude, let's do yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, there's there's a reason for that. You can't. No way, Adam couldn't hold any pills because he's gonna take them all yeah. <laughs> or forget. Right. Is, is this good? Oh, yeah. yeah. So yeah. we, we, we took, like the time you took at once. Like the time you took 15 servings of, of, of what you would call it. Uh, <laughs> what? What, 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 did I, what did I take on it? Uh, oh, oh God. right, the, the alpha brain. Yeah, yeah. 15. Uh, you took like 15. You alpha brain the shit oh, out of that day, and evil spirits took over me. Yeah. Possessed. I was dude. throwing up like a dragon. Fucking so called my mom over that one. You dude. thought you had, you thought you were, yeah, some evil shit was coming out of you. For here, sure, dude. No, it was, it was 15 <laughs> servings of a, of a fucking yeah, supplement. Yeah, you went, you went deep. No, dude, I'm, I'm charcoal. The green, the charcoal and green juice is what I've been doing the most. That's that's what I've been doing the most. Yeah, I'm the most consistent with that also. And that makes such a huge. Now the other side of this is I don't drink until I can't see anymore. I don't think nothing. I don't think anything will save I don't you think from any that. Of us do that anymore. Yeah, it's no. Like I wonder if the Organifi people know that that's how we use their supplements. What to, to, to help us drink to more? Our <laughs> yeah. bad, bad habits. I can't. They, they, I don't think they can be happy with that commercial. I don't with, know. With, yeah. With yeah, using them that way. Yeah, yeah, we're realistic. I mean, people. I'm just talking about how. I'm just talking about my experience. Right. Yeah, right. I, I mean, that's all. Oh, I, I mean, agree. I mean, it, wor it works for me too. Yeah. So. I mean, I use their protein. Uh, I use their protein in the probably two three days a Dude, week. Dude, how least. about when Aaron? Alexander came over here, right? Uh -huh. From what you call it, this dude, okay, <laughs> line podcast. Yeah, this there's this there's this movement on on this, and this is where I was always afraid Sal could get this weird. You know what I'm saying? Like he was going down this holistic path that I was like, dude, do not be the guy who shows up to work every day barefoot and no shirt on, and will take a cup out of the trash and mix a protein shake with your finger in it. Like, don't become <laughs> yeah, that guy. Yeah, yeah. Please don't become that guy. Hey, he's he, literally, he literally did that, dude. Yeah. We were all, we were all, get, we just got done shooting. He reaches in our trash he's can. Hungry. He, he, he throws out, he goes over to our, our Organifi well, protein shake. He it was an old cup, what it was. It was an old yeah. cup, and it had some fluid in it. We don't know what that was. <laughs> yeah. And he just dumped I out think the fluid. Like, yeah, it was like an old coffee cup. He just dumped yeah. out the fluid. Whatever. I don't Whatever care what it was. It was, it was old. He, it was got old. Some, he got his Organifi protein, but then he mixed it with his two fingers, <laughs> yeah. which doesn't mix very well. Yeah, no. Those like, things, ah, you can oh, shake the shit out of those things, and you still don't mix it perfect. No, know? he was well, I remember out. the days you used to put like scoops in your mouth, and then you'd try and like put water in afterwards. I did that what with a pre workout. Idea. Yeah. I used to do that with pre workout. Yeah, pre workout and creatine, things like that. Just because you just want to get it in. You know what I mean? Dude, that's like. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, that is gnarly. Yeah, no. it's like eating saltine crackers. Yeah, it's almost you know. impressive. I'll be honest. Yeah, yeah, I'm weird in a different way. Yeah. I'm not weird in that way. No, you're mm. weird in a good way. I balance it all. But it, every, every once in a while, when we get we get into the holistic hippie talk and stuff like that, I get a little worried. What's hippie it. talk? You know, <laughs> talking all about all your chakra and turmeric and when the hell did celestial. I talk about chakras? <laughs> you get all I'm, celestial on us. I've never brought right, I've never I'm brought up right. chakras <laughs> in my entire life. It's usually when you have that golden hue. It's only when we that, like, that was, emanates. That it. was you. I know. Dude, that, was me. Said that. <laughs> that has to be the. <laughs> Bro, that day uh, we were at the beach. I don't know what, what Justin ate or whatever, but we're sitting there and he's looking at me. And every he would look straight ahead and then he would look at me like this, kind of sideways. And then he'd look away and start like laughing. Like he couldn't, <laughs> he couldn't look at me. I'm like, what, dude? Yeah, he's I like, my mind was playing you, tricks on me he's or like, something. You're golden. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, and, he's, and then he'd look away and start you're laughing. The golden one. <laughs> What would you do if I started floating right there? I was like, uh, I don't can, know. I'd I'm like, like, you can wow. see me. <laughs> Oh, it's like maybe, maybe he was right about himself, you know, <laughs> <laughs> this whole time. Yeah, right about, him, up. about himself. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, 
I told you, dude. Yeah, I've been saying this the whole time. Dang. Like, oh, wow, I didn't believe you, dude. Dang, dude. Uh, yeah. It was nice to good, see. Good for you. Yeah, good for you. <laughs> You're golden. Yeah, golden. It was nice to see your guys' dogs uh, hang out a little bit. Yeah, That's yeah. not the first time they met, is yeah, it? They got along pretty well. Yeah. No, I think that was the first time they hung out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's the first time Marlo's been around, though. I mean, yeah. Marlo's only, what, eight months old? Mm-hmm. Or less? Only eight there months. was only one little, little puppy. scruff. A little kerfuffle. Yeah, and that was when, who was it was trying to have sex with, with uh, yeah, it? Yeah, it was dog. Bentley who was just trying to. Oh, Bentley tried to mount him. him a little. Yeah. Uh, but that's typical. You know what they say typical. about have their dogs and their owners? You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> it's very <laughs> that's, yeah, same, same way I reacted the first I time see. I met Justin. Yeah. That's why, <laughs> that's why, that's why yeah. Arlo wasn't having it. Instant friends after that. Get off me, dude. Get off me. I'm not like that. Yeah. All right, let's just be friends. They got, all right, fine. Then, I had to try. I had to try. But yeah. then they were. <laughs> <laughs> so damn Just glutes. wanted to see. Just wanted to see. But then they were all good. Yeah. They were all good after that. Yeah, no, they, you know, it's, uh, the, the boys are, they get anxiety, man. It's a, it's really weird. Like, and I know partially. Is it anxiety or is it excitement or does it matter? Well, it's same difference, right? Yeah. Right. I, I think that, and I, it, the part that I blame myself on is I, I didn't socialize them enough when they were younger. They had like. A, one or two dog friends of friends of mine that had dogs that w- they would play with occasionally, but I didn't take them to the dog parts on a regular on a regular basis. And you know that they're in that they were always in between that small dog and big dog. Like they do better with like big dogs because they can handle themselves like big dogs because they Bentley Bentley weighs seventy five pounds, yeah. but they're short and stocky. You know what I'm saying? So they got center of gravity. Yeah, for them. and and so because of that, I I didn't really take them around. It was like a, you know their teen years as a dog or whatever. And ever since then, like they just get really weird. And I would take Bentley out. And, and this I, is just around a lot of people. Yeah, dogs, people. Whatever, it doesn't have to be dogs, just people. Like they just don't get a lot of inter- Like it's just a, everything around them. He get. It's like he has ADD, dude. We'll go and I'll take him to a restaurant where like Santana Row or where you can eat outside and sit there. And he's like so excited of all the noises and the things that are going on that he just can't sit still. And you can see that he, even if I have him tied up right next to me, it's he's so excited that his his heart rate's going. So his mm-hmm. heart rate mm-hmm. elevates, and he's panting, and he's breathing so heavy. And and the bulldogs when they breathe that like that, it's so loud, and so it's embarrassing. <laughs> you know, so you're trying to eat out there, and the, as cute as the dogs are, they're breathing so heavy. I got to think that the the person who's sitting right next to me or across the way from me has to be so annoyed because if they're trying to have a nice conversation with their their date or whatever and they got to listen to my dog <laughs> you know it's like oh god dude so i just don't take them that often unless it's like if it's just katrina and i like they're fine we take them everywhere we travel when we travel they'll, they'll go with us as long as we're at a place that's dog friendly and stuff and they do just fine but with the group that we had i mean how many people do we have there with all the kids and everything i know it was a lot of, lot yeah. of stuff decent size group yeah, yeah we had about what 12 or so close to that mm-hmm. people at, at the house and so and just everyone's lot music's going, barbecues clanging, and another dogs running around. So, you know, we had them drugged up a little bit. So they we have these, uh, you know, I don't know what you call them, suppressant or whatever for them that they take that they the doctors given us that it's we an use anti anxiety. Yeah, and it works. <laughs> it yeah. yeah, it works pretty good. Adam's like, look at he's like, look at them. They look like they're stoned because they're like, yeah. <laughs> oh, they they t- it calms them down. Yeah, it calms them down. But I can tell they're they're out of it. And I can tell they don't like being that way either. You can just see, I can just see it on them. I can see that they don't, it's not like they're, they're very cuddly. Yeah. Yeah. They're not, they're, they're such cuddly dogs. Especially Mozzie. Yeah. Mozzie's my lover. Bentley's like a, depends on when you, when you get him, you know, like he's sometimes he's in that mood. Katrina, he's very close to her. She's because she's the, the lover of the, the two of us. Like I'm the alpha. She's like the, if they're hurt or they're sad mm-hmm. or they get disciplined by me. They go over to her side of the bed and sit there and want her. They or while we're watching TV, Bentley will sit next to her because he's the needy one that wants that. Mozzie's my cool guy. Like he, I used to take him to Orange Theory all the time, and this was really cool. I used to be able to go, <clears throat> and I would take him from the house, le- unleashed, no collar, no nothing. Like hop him in the, get him in the car. We'd show up to Orange Theory at five o'clock in the morning. He jumps out with me, follows me into the building, and then he won't leave my heel more than about three feet. And so I could be teaching classes, critic, you know, uh, <clears throat> critiquing form, walking around, talking to people, blah, and he just walking back and forth, sit right next to me, doesn't bug anybody that while they're working out, just wants to be close, close to me while I'm working. That was really cool that I could do that with him, but I can't do that with Bentley. Bentley just kidding. so he doesn't get anxious by himself. Mozzie? No, yeah, by himself. The only reason why Mozzie's even a little bit anxious is because of Bentley. Bentley mm-hmm. rubs off on him, mm-hmm. and I always want to take Mozzie places, and Katrina's always getting mad at me. She's like, "You can't take him." Because what happens... Bentley this, probably gets, he gets all butt hurt. Yes. 
So it's the funniest thing. So I would take Mozzie. Such kids. I would take Mozzie to Orange Theory. And then when I would come home, like, so when you walk in my door, you walk right into the pantry or the, or the uh, front area, right? And then straight up is the stairs. And as soon as we'd walk in the door, you know, Mozzie would be next to me and Bentley would be at the top of the stairs just glaring. Like he'd been sitting there all day just waiting, waiting for us to come in through the door. And then he would just give like this dirty ass look to both of us, right? <laughs> wouldn't come down, wouldn't greet me or anything like that. And then within an hour or two of us being home, they would be fighting, you know, and it would be Bentley just, and Bentley never antagonizes Mozzie except for when I take him somewhere and I don't take him. And so Katrina never lets me take just Mozzie, but I would take him, I'd have him here right now. I mean, cause he's so easy. He would just be sleeping right now on the floor next to us. Yeah. But then I have to deal with them being jealous. That's, that's so cute. That's yeah, a weird predicament. <laughs> that's so cute, dude. Did, I, did we ever talk about how the the Miss America pageant is eliminating the swimsuit portion? No, did we you didn't guys hear talk about, about it. But I did hear about it. Why? So, yeah. What's it going to be? <laughs> what, <laughs> who's going to watch it? Yeah, exactly. What's the incentive now to watch? It's going to be about, I guess, what they say and their talents. Yeah. I don't know. Crickets. Uh, yeah, exactly. I don't know. I mean, when's the first one that's going to happen like that? Because it's just this just this passed. was recent. This was like a, a couple months ago that this happened, right? That right. They, that they kind of announced this. I don't know. I don't even know what the, what do they do in the Miss America pageant? They because, wear bikinis. Well, they do a lot of things. They do a lot of things. Yeah, they come they don't out. Just do that. They come out like ten different times. Like one, they'll come out and they'll. they'll I guess are they, they're probably still going to do the evening dress one. Right? Don't they come out in an evening dress? They do do that. Yeah, so they'll still do that, and then th then they answer questions. And they do a talk. They have some. They normally have something that they 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 talk about. Like mm -hmm. I don't know what their points are. They make though. Mm -hmm. Look it up. Look 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 up, look up yeah. what the Miss America pageant protocol is. Yeah. So, so what do you guys think about that eliminating like a talent show? Now. Well, I want to know why. Like, what what is it? Because yeah, we was it backlash? Subjectifying them is that why? Yeah, I think that's why. Yeah, I think it's along those lines. Like they don't want them just to be judged upon their physical appearance but i mean they are getting judged on their appearance you know because they're on the camera this is part of isn't that part of the right the show i don't know it's interesting it's an interesting time right yeah i don't know i don't know if i, I agree. Why, yeah what's wrong with with them wearing bikinis you know what i mean i i have i i don't know somebody explain this to me i don't know yeah. is there's no male pageants is there it's just bikini. Bodybuilding. Body I mean, <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what it is. Right. I mean, it's pretty much the same thing. You know, it's one of those things. It's like we, 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 we're really, people have a tough time with like reality in the sense that people get judged on physical appearance all the time. Yeah. But I can understand the, the, the concept behind removing this because this is kind of making it the, because I can almost, I almost feel like this is the more popular part of the show. Yeah, it'll be interesting of to see. Of course, it is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, if I mean, I imagine that Miss America is probably watched predominantly by women, but there's probably a good thirty or forty percent of the audience is men. Well, it's just, and it's, you got to think that that's what a majority of them are watching. Mm, yeah, I, mean, I don't know. At least a majority. Mm -hmm. You know, there's somebody on here that's like, no, man, I listen to it for the speech. Yeah, it's entertainment <laughs> though. It's not like I don't know. It's I mean, unless it's highlighting movers and shakers, you know, women, powerful women that are like taking over, you know, like whatever direction like work wise or like we're turning this into something completely different we're just before that we were just like oh you know who's like a beautiful like intelligent person in my state so it's going to be like a just a talent show yeah that's I, what I, don't, I don't understand Doug, does yeah. it explain What's what it is political... is it literally what we say is it just because we're objectifying women that's why right. yeah they're trying to evolve it they say uh, yeah, well, because of the cultural revolution so i think it's the me too movement and all this other stuff that's yeah. kind of driving this well the you know the physical attraction part that's kind of part of it and no matter what almost you can't really eliminate that i think it's just the bikini aspect you know what i mean otherwise they're still going to get points on how they look mm. right yeah i don't know well yeah what's I, next i well, just <laughs> i don't understand the appeal of it i wonder point. if they're i wonder if the ratings were dropping because i'm pretty sure their ratings were not doing good and they're trying to figure out a way to get more ratings i don't know if that's the that's way a to really do it backward strategy no. if that's the case <laughs> they're, they're all, yeah <laughs> the two options were eliminate the bikini portion or they're probably just scared do it in a thong yeah, or, or literally eliminate it like, or, let's yeah. either eliminate it or, or eliminate really them. eliminate them wearing anything and yeah. see how that goes yeah i wonder yeah. there's yeah it's a scholars they're Hmm. What does that say there? Oh, wow. You, you've you actually, Doug, you've made the mistake of clicking on one of Ty Lopez's videos now, so it follows you around everywhere. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. 
maybe the most aggressive Forever. marketer of Women all will not be judged on their outside appearance. So it's no longer a pageant, but instead a competition. So they're going to change the whole thing completely then. Interesting. Yeah. They're well, going to change the well, whole thing. Well, what's interesting It's definitely have to see how that plays out. Mm. Well, we'll see. Yeah. It's inter- it's interesting to see where where media is trying to go with certain things, right? Yeah. I, I look, I applaud it. Here's a deal. The how many people watch it is going to tell, right? It's going to tell how people receive it because I think sometimes we have good ideas. Well, what are they getting, that we want people to be a particular way, but then and society agrees with it, but then it's their well, attendance. How that about we look at it like this it. way? If you guys were to organize a Miss America pageant, okay, a Miss America, someone who represents America as mm-hmm. a female, mm-hmm. what would you want them to? What would you want them to do? If I wanted some, if, well, it, okay, this Miss America, the representing America, this is a, a woman that should win. She's Miss America. She is the woman of America. What do I want? What do I want her attributes to be, or what? So, and, oh, and really? So how, so how would I? Yeah. Think, oh, I, I wouldn't think, have the bikini part, but I'd have a physical fitness part. Like you've got to like yeah. do shit. No, I agree. Yeah. You know what I mean? You got to yeah. show that you got to be fit. a badass and yeah. intelligent. Yeah. I mean, those are two things. I'd want her to smart, I'd, healthy, strong. Smart, healthy, strong. Physically fit in the sense that you can like do an obstacle course. I want to see how good you are with a gun. Like if you could shoot really. <laughs> wow. You're Miss America, bro. Yeah. yeah. You need to be able to like you know pew, pew, yeah, you know yeah. show. <laughs> that was right. a terrible gun noise. <laughs> <laughs> pew pew. <laughs> <laughs> you want to shoot a? As you yeah. can see he shot a lot of guns. <laughs> pew pew pew. <laughs> <laughs> you want to shoot a laser? <laughs> uh, no, but uh, you know shoot a gun. What's another one? Uh, you should be able to win a debate. Right. Against somebody that's really right, smart, right. There, should be, there should be a debate in there. I agree. Yeah. yeah, I like a physical challenge, some 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 sort of an obstacle course that both challenges, you know, strength and endurance. Mm-hmm. So it's like a, a mix of the two. So you got to be, you don't have to be the strongest person in the world. You don't have to be the fastest or the best endurance, but a, a nice mixture of that. Yeah, right. Something so, that has to that highlights intellect, which I like debate. Well, debate does that. Yeah, so I, like I agree. Debate. I think we all can agree yeah. that they, they they could have like a moderator and there's a topic and the girls yeah. have to go heads up on. Maybe a topic. have them do a presentation on how they would uh, tackle a problem in the world. Yeah, you know what I mean. So I think I- invent they, something. Now that's one of the ones I think they do. So then when I was talking about how they get up there and talk, I think they have to do something like they that. do. But the questions are already uh, preloaded. No, I don't think so. I think they're random. Oh, really? I think they're like, yeah. What do you think about whatever? And then they have to. But th- they, I've never seen them answer questions really well. No, yeah, not that, these that, ones. Exactly. I think that was my concern because, like, you've seen a, a, like them ask them really tough questions like that, how to solve like well, maybe problems, and they're like, ah. This is probably why this went this direction. It's probably they they started looking back and like, listen, you know, yeah, we keep we got to improve this. This is supposed to be Miss America, and she can't even answer the most basic. I just question. don't want them to eliminate like, you know, like. Taking beautiful women and putting them out there. You know I mean? Like, <laughs> <laughs> like let's have, like make like what's what? wrong with that? Well, I think so. I'm okay. What's I'm, wrong with I'm, that? I'm 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 game with Justin here. That it. I want I want Miss America to be not only I want her to be a badass. I want her to be kind of hot. I want her too. to be kind of hot. She needs to be hot too. It, that's not too much. Well, to it has ask. to be. There's, there's, has to be marketable. Yeah. 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 yeah she, and she's representing our country opposed to everybody else's country. So I want her to be the shit, dude. Yeah. 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 So she's. She's got to be. She good. can be all those things. You know, I don't know though. I think I think in a, a tra- when you look at all those qualities, attractiveness is is different than just the physical though. You know what I mean? Like if you had yes imagine and this. No. Well, imagine if you had an average looking girl who did the fit thing. She shot the gun real good. Then she got in the debate. She was hella smart and witty and charismatic and right. and intelligent and sharp. And then she talked about. She's going to appear way more attractive. That's fair. Than the really well, yeah, attractive she, girl that doesn't that, do that's any of that. Fair. Stuff. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. you weigh it out. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. you know, I, I mean, she. I think. It, I think that the just like. I mean, this is how they judge in men's physique, even though they, they don't actually say the. They don't have on. you guys talk. No, 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 no. No, I mean by that. <laughs> you imagine if they had men's physique it's guys still, talk. <laughs> it's still subjective to like how you look. Like I mean, at the end yeah, of the day, these guys like that they're looking to put you on magazines. So if you don't think that if of there's course. two guys that are ex- exactly the same and one of them's fucking ugly as shit and the other guys the you know all American blonde hair blue reality. eye, it is. It's bo- sorry, you know what I'm saying. So it's still a, it's a factor. So I think that yeah. I think those other factors should play the biggest role. But I think that I I, I think would, it's just too PC if like we just but why you know why that. can't I have her be in a bikini? I mean that. that uh, why not? I mean I don't. Yeah. I don't especially, whatever. Especially since yeah, it was you know, it's, it's TV. I, I think it's a dead thing. Anyway. I think people say what they that what they want, but then the way they behave really shows what they want. Right. And I think if you poll a bunch of people, should 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 they be judged on their appearance? Most people would be like, well, no, that's not fair. Exactly. But then 
are they going to tune in and watch a bunch of unattractive people? No. You know, and that's just the reality. That's just reality. It and just that's the thing. I'm just being you're... honest, you know. It's like a lot of people won't say that just because, oh, I want to be so, like, politically correct and not get any kind of backlash, mm-hmm. you know. But it's like, you're not going to fucking watch that. Yeah. Nobody's gonna watch that. Yeah, it's, yeah, and we'll see. We'll see what the what the what, uh, yeah what Prove the me ratings wrong. show. I feel like we could have came up with another thing that they had to do that was really cool. Like mm. what? I don't know. I just feel like there's something else out there that I would want Miss America to be able to do, like all yeah. the things that she Miss America. I came up with a good one. No, I think you did. A good one shooting a gun. No, would be a I good agree. One. I'm, not, I'm not as funny as it was. I'm like okay, because yeah. that makes her like I Miss America. Should, I want her to. I want to feel like Miss America could defend me. Mm. Right. Like if we had to go like maybe shit, kill a terrorist or something. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. It just has like a Patriot missile and just. Right. I mean, I want to. I want to think that like if something happened, we get trapped in a building. There's we're being held hostage or something like that, and I find out the chick sitting next to me. She looks over and she goes, "Don't worry, I'm Miss America." Yeah. yeah. Oh yes. I'm like, oh, yeah. We're fuck okay. yeah, we're getting out of here. You know, what I'm saying? Yeah, she's yeah. either gonna be able to negotiate, her negotiate her way out of here. She's gonna be able to trick the guy because she's smart, or yeah. potentially whoop his ass, right? Or shoot him if she gets his gun. You know what I'm saying? Oh, like, man. that's Miss America to me. I need, I want to know if we get taken hostage. I feel confident that we're getting out because she's there. Mm-hmm. So whatever mm-hmm. those attributes are, I think shooting a gun is good. I think some sort of a physical obstacle course and strength test. And debate. Mm. Yeah, good debate, debate. Right. Solving a problem. Right. I, I, those are the only ones I can think yeah, of. Like that critical would be thinking, creating a right? business. Yeah. I don't know, creating something. a business. That'd yeah, be kind of, I guess. Interesting. Maybe. Maybe. That's not really that. Maybe. I mean, it's not, yeah. Right. It's, it's not like she's interesting. Take it, go back to the thing what I'm saying. Like she's sitting next to you and you're like, well, have you ever built a business though? Yeah. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. That's not going to help you get out so of So you want, what you're looking for is more of a oh, superhero. Like, yeah, exactly. Caricature. Action hero. You want like a Miss America to be like a Wonder Woman. Well, what would be Mr. America? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, Miss, Miss America just sounds like a. Yeah. You got to represent a really us. smart, mm-hmm. like, Navy SEAL guy or something. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What? <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking Mr. America now. Yeah. You know what I, mean? I don't know. Yeah. Bring, the, bring the American bird, please. Let's, let's bring the Queagle. This quaz brought to you by Organifi. For those days you fall short on getting your organic veggies or whole food nutrition, Organifi fills the gap with laboratory-tested certified organic superfoods to help give your health and performance the added edge. Try Organifi totally risk-free for 60 days by going to Organifi.com. That's O-R-G-A-N-I-F-I. Dot com and use a coupon code MINDPUMP for 20% off at checkout. Our first question is from Logan Turner Fitness. What is the importance of rest period timing for certain goals such as hypertrophy, strength, and endurance? So good question. Yeah, for well, oh. for physical pursuits, uh, or you know, for physical type performance, rest periods are really important. The 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 more complicated question is in terms of muscular hypertrophy or building muscle. But let, first, I think we'll address, let's address strength and endurance first. Those are easy, right? For muscular endurance, shorter rest periods. Shorter rest periods are going to challenge that part of your body a little bit more. They're going to they're challenge your ability to recover faster and your ability to keep going even though you're running out of, you know, energy in your body right like a 15 to 45 second tops rest period yeah yeah 30 seconds is how i would usually do it like when yeah. it when like uh phase three in maps anabolic was a 30 second rest in between sets which mm-hmm. is short it doesn't sound short but it is you count 30 seconds you go again you're not able to lift that much weight because you're so tired so that's going to definitely build endurance and when it comes to strength the goal the idea with with <clears throat> building strength is you want to train the strength so you want to rest long enough to replenish the primary form of energy that you use when you're trying to be really strong, which is ATP. Mm-hmm. And studies will show that's like three minutes. It's around three minutes rest. Yeah. It's you know? longer than people think. Mm-hmm. You know, you think that like you've, you've had adequate rest, but a lot of times you're still like, you know, you still need more. And it's, it's always like interesting to me going through that because it feels like a long time, you know, in between re- like resting like three minutes. That, that seems like forever. But dude, it's super important. Dude, to do ten sets right of several exercises, which is not that big of a workout. Like most of my workouts are anywhere between fifteen to twenty-five sets because I'm training multiple body parts, right? But let's say you just did ten sets and you rested three minutes in between each of those sets. Right. That's thirty minutes just of resting. That's yeah. thirty minutes of resting. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Now add in, you know, the exercise time and setting up the workout, this and that. A ten set workout with three minute rest in between. That's an easily an hour if not longer, 
of a workout, but it's probably around an hour. Now, the in my opinion, the most important thing about rest periods, so we could sit here and we could split up uh, the categories, hypertrophy, strength, endurance, and the rest periods and what the technical protocol is. Now, when I talk to clients and I teach people about this, the main thing that I speak to is that we tend to, like anything else, we gravitate to a, a way or a rest period. You get comfortable with that rest period. Mm -hmm. And you always do that. Like, and this is common. I see people do this even when they change their sets, sets and weight and volume and everything else because they're just used to this rhythm. Nobody tracks the rest period. Yeah, very few people manipulate this. And this is actually a really cool thing to to manipulate if you've never really tracked before. Like, you want a, a really tough workout, like, pay attention to your rest periods. And maybe what you do is you just pay attention to it, see where it's at, and then pick the other end of the spectrum. So, you are maybe somebody who always does, leans towards the long, really long rest periods, or you're the other side of the spectrum where you love to superset everything and you're oh. barely resting longer than 30. That, I mean, that, that has to be like the majority of people will tend to like jump back in too quickly. And that's something that's like, uh, because you just feel like, oh, I need to keep working and I want to get this over with, or, you know, whatever the urgency is, like a lot of times, um, you know, circuit training is really popular and everybody wants to burn the most calories. And so the first first thing that gets cut is rest right and so mm -hmm. strength training itself is like it's 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 a hard concept for people to understand and to apply the actual discipline of you know mm -hmm. a long rest period a question like the of course extremes we're not talking about extremes we're talking about the general rest periods people will pick from which is between 30 minutes to i'd say 90 sec i'm oh, sorry 30 seconds to 90 seconds or 120 seconds so you're looking at between half a minute to two minutes is typically where people will naturally try to rest in between sets or especially people that work out quite a bit. But this question reminds me of a similar question, which is which, which rep range is best, right? And here, now here's the a deal. The one you're not doing. Yeah, here's the deal. If we, com if we compare rest periods uh, in a short, like, because they've done studies on this. They've done studies to see which rest, what rest period builds more muscle and builds more strength. And there is actually a, a popular study that people like to cite where they took 12 <coughs> you know, well-trained men and they trained them and they had half of them do a uh, short rest period, which was, I think, under a minute. And then the other half do a long rest period, which was three minutes. And then at the end of the... I, I remember this study. At the end of the study, and I think the study was short. It was like nine weeks long, something like that. They tested their strength and their muscle size. The guys that rested longer built more muscle and got stronger than the group that rested shorter. Now that's true if you compare people head to head for in that, that short period, that of, short time. period of time. That same person, I was as this person. I was a kid growing up that wanted to build strength, wanted to build size. So everything that I read leaned towards that. I rest remember long, reading, yeah, rest long, and so I was doing that forever. One of the biggest changes I saw in my physique over my 15 years was when I finally, and I don't remember who it was that like told me, like you just you need to go lightweight, dude, everyone. If you've been lifting six reps, mm -hmm. resting that long for years, like you need to just, you need to do 15, 20 reps, low rest period, lightweight. Don't worry about the weight. Just get a nice, man, I just blew. I saw my strength go up. I saw my size go up. Mm -hmm. And I was lifting these really light weights. And that's because I was on the other. So I feel like, in the, so that's what I meant by instead of splitting hairs, and telling people like, oh, well, this is technically for building strength when you rest between here. This is technically building endurance when you rest here. This is technically for the hypertrophy phase, which we can do, right, yeah. which, which you just did. I always talk about, listen, whatever you tend to gravitate towards all the time, we should be doing something different for a while. Yeah, and then the, when you the, start one, the one you're not doing. Right. Do the one you're not doing, and that's where you're going to see the change. This is the reason why we phase all of our MAPS programs. If, if if this wasn't the case, the way we would design our MAPS programs would be one rest period, one rep range, and that's it. And then we would just change exercises. But the but we don't do that. We phase them. And not only do the exercises change, but so do the rest periods and so do the, the, the rep ranges. So but here's a big here's a big point, and this is something you kind of alluded to, Adam. People don't track their rest period at all. Right. Most people, mm -hmm. even people I know who work out for a long time, even myself, the thing that I will that I'm least likely to track is my rest in between sets. I tend to go when I feel like I'm ready to go, and that's for me. Depending on the body part and exercise, that's between 45 seconds to a minute and a half. But sometimes, and I've done this many times, I'm I'm manipulating variables, and what I'll start to do is track my rest, and I'll shorten it. Or I'll lengthen it, and I'll say, okay, instead of resting 
you know, 60 seconds like I always do, I'm going to do two weeks where I rest you know, 90 seconds or, or two minutes or the opposite. I'm going to go shorter and I'm going to keep everything else the same. Inevitably, every single time I do that, I see a change in my body. Yep. Absolutely. Yep. So it's important to, to mix up your rest, rate, your rest periods. But here's another piece to that because there's another side to this debate where people will say, well, is it good then to have short and long rest periods in the same workouts? To mix it up to throw different signals, mm. same th- same reason people will say that with with reps. They'll say, oh, you know, I know low reps can do this and high reps can do that. Why don't I do some sets low reps, some sets high reps? The Why problem don't I do- with that is it's really tough because you're too many mixed signals, too many variables uh-huh. to really see how your body is responding. So yes, you can do that. Yes, I've done that before, and there's nothing. There's not. There's not a rule that says you can't do that. But I think there's a lot more benefit to actually programming it to where it's like okay like you said for the next two or three weeks i'm gonna fall i'm gonna change this this one variable and then go from there i I think that the main point to be made is that what happens with people is they again this is why we're so anti all the boxes right they identify with a category so when you look at hypertrophy strength endurance i think of three three body types or three type of people that work out endurance people are your you know crossfit your uh, with Spartan race, your runners, your people that want to do aerobics classes, high intensity, short rest periods, like they lean more towards that. Then you have your strength athletes, which tend to be like your power lifters and guys that do the belt and the chalk and they wait two, three, four minutes in between sets and that and they identify with the, that group of people. And then you have your hypertrophy on the bodybuilder doing chasing the pump stuff. And that's how I train. And so because they identify with a the group, they think that, oh, I'm a bodybuilder guy, so I should never train like a marathon runner or like a Spartan race guy. That doesn't make sense. Or I'm a strength athlete, so there's, there's no reason for me to be doing endurance type stuff. And so th- it turns into these camps. And because of that, that you get stuck in a modality, and this includes these rest periods, that could greatly benefit change in your body. So whatever you're currently doing, I don't care if you're following maps or not, you know, pay attention to what that's been, and I would challenge you to do something that's the furthest from that, right? So you're not going to see a huge difference for somebody who does, you know, 90-second rest periods and they go to two-minute rest periods. It's not going to be a huge difference. But if you're a really short rest period person and then you go to three-minute long ones and you go after strength really hard, you're going to see a big difference and, and vice versa. Next question is from Cubic Kenny. When you're in a deficit, what dictates how much fat versus muscle you are losing? There's three main variables. One of them's genetics that I can think of. Sure. Besides genetics, that's of course genetics is always going to play a role, right? But there's three main variables that I can think of off the top of my head that are the biggest variables that will dictate how much fat versus muscle you lose when you're in a deficit. One, the size of the deficit. The larger the deficit, the more likely your body will try to adapt by losing muscle to slow itself down to adapt to the low calories. The second variable I can think of are the macronutrient profile. If your protein intake is really low and you're in a deficit, the odds that you're going to lose muscle seem to increase. So there, there, do, there does seem to be a muscle sparing effect from a high protein diet when you're in a deficit. And w- and in within all the points you're making, there is a genetic variance for oh, all these people. Always, always. So there's going to be some people, and I've trained clients like this, many clients, that you could starve their body. You could not feed them anything. They could be a total deficit protein, and they just their body holds muscle. They just they're able to ha- hang on. I had dated a girl that was like this. That she just got shredded. She just got lean. Now it was hard for her to lean out. It was hard for her to lean out, but her body held on to her lean body mass mm-hmm. really, really well. So it's tough for her to, you know, lose body fat. And then you have the, someone like me, where I will I can drop weight really quick. You know, if I stop eating or cut back on calories or reduce significantly, you know, my my weight will plummet. But I tend to lose at a pretty even ratio of muscle and fat when I'm not getting adequate protein. Mm -hmm. So if I'm not hitting my protein, which is what happens when I fall off the diet or I stop paying attention or tracking, I I don't get enough protein for my size. You know, 200 pound plus guy, you know, I need about 160 to 180 grams of protein minimal, where if I only eat two times in a day, and I've talked about this on the show before, I easily can only get 120, 130. So if I'm in a deficit and I'm only hitting 100, 120 grams of protein, 
my body just muscle falls off damn right, near right. as fast as the fat does. Right, right. So every, there's uh, definitely well, genetic variances, but those factors I think are yeah. some of the biggest. And then factors. the third one that I can think of is your training, because the type of training that you do is going to tell your body that it either needs What's the muscle yeah. or it doesn't need the muscle. So here's a good example. If I'm doing a lot of endurance type training, if I'm calling upon my body to adapt in a way that improves its endurance, mm -hmm. what that means is I need to become more efficient with energy and I don't need a lot of muscle to do that. In fact, I don't need a lot of mu I don't need much muscle at all. Like in order to rung long distance or to move from exercise to exercise to exercise with really light weight with no rest you don't need a lot of muscle you just need muscle that doesn't fatigue very quickly you need muscle that can keep performing mm -hmm. and that's not big muscle that's small muscle small efficient muscle mm -hmm. now if i train my body for strength where i tell my body i need to be able to move heavy things i need to be able to explode off the line i need to be able to be strong well, now my body needs muscle. It needs bigger muscle to do that because bigger muscle fibers contract harder and more forcefully. They don't necessarily have more stamina and endurance, but they are stronger. So if I train for strength while I'm at a deficit, the odds that I'm going to lose muscle diminishes dramatically. And dramatically. I, I love that strategy. Yeah. I love using that strategy not only with clients but myself. The only thing that, that you got to tell people with that is – there's a still a good chance that you're going to see strength kind of diminish because you're in a deficit. Right. So you, you, it plays with them. It kind of mentally fucks people. But if you just know that, listen, by you doing that, sending that loud signal, you're helping yourself hang on to as much muscle as possible. So that's a good thing. Don't let it fuck with your head just because you see your strength starting to diminish because that's inevitable if you're in a long, you know, two, three, four week caloric deficit and you're, you're going to be losing weight. You're going to see strength diminish just because you're depleted. But by training that way, you're still sending that loud signal to can't hang on to that muscle. So I love that strategy as long as you can break through the mental yeah. piece. In fact, if you're a beginner, let's say you just get started. Let's say I get a client who hasn't worked out for a while and they're overweight. You know, they're 30, 30 or 40 pounds overweight and they want to lose that weight. And I first start training them. I don't want them to lose any weight on the scale in the beginning. I, in fact, it, it rarely happens initially. Maybe a couple pounds, but and that's usually just water because I maybe they clean their diet up a little bit and they're not eating things that tends to have them hold water. But their scale, the weight tends to stay the, scale, the same at first because what I'm doing is I'm trying to send the signal to get stronger while we're putting them in a very small deficit. But that doesn't mean they don't lose body fat because then when we do body fat testing, we can see, and this happens almost every single time, Oh, on the scale, you only lost a pound or two or none, but you actually lost, you know, four pounds of body fat and you've gained three pounds of muscle, which is a great place to be. That's exactly where you want to be. So it's about the signal as well. But yeah, cal the other thing too is the deficit. Like if I, if I put someone in a 1500 calorie deficit, the odds that they're going to lose muscle goes up a lot, regardless of the workout. Right. Like it's a big ass deficit, right? Yeah. So you want to go with a smaller deficit so that your body isn't... Because what happens with a larger deficit is this. When you give someone a really, really, really big deficit, and it's all relative, right? Depending on how many calories their body's naturally burning. So somebody whose body is burning 1,500 calories you know, naturally, which means their metabolism is relatively slow compared to an athlete... If I put them on a 500 calorie deficit, that's kind of a big deficit for someone who's only eating 1,500 calories. Yeah, it's a third of their... Exactly. It's a yeah. third of their total calories. Right. Somebody who's eating 2,500 calories or 3,000 calories, 500 calorie deficit is very, it's a great place to start. So this is all very individual. But when you go with a very large deficit, it's not because your body is burning muscle to make it up, make up for it. Because that's what the people will say like, oh, if you go too big of a deficit, your body will burn the muscle to, to, because you're in so much of a deficit and you need more food. That's not really what's happening. The reason why you're losing muscle is because the deficit is so big in comparison to your basal metabolic rate that your body is aiming to adapt it wants to be its efficient. metabolism. It wants to be efficient. Yeah, and, and all this muscle costs a lot of calories, and you're not it. giving it a lot of calories. So it says, hey, this is expensive tissue. You're not paying the bank what it needs to hang on. It pairs so, it back. Yeah, here you go. Take it back. I don't want, I don't yeah. want it. It expensive. pairs it back, and it makes you more efficient with calories because that deficit was so large in comparison to your metabolic rate. So- that's a very big one. So once you figure out how many calories you're burning and you want to place yourself in a deficit, if you're only burning 1,500 calories, I would put you at maybe 200, maybe a 200-calorie deficit. To be quite honest, 
with everybody, if your body was only burning 14 or 15 or calories, I'd probably put you in no deficit. And I'd be like, let's get that number to go up first because what we don't here's that you don't want to be in a position where you're you've lost so you've lost fat and you've lost muscle, but now you're in a position where your metabolism is a lot slower because you've got to live in this body for the rest of your life. And yes, congratulations, you lost 30 pounds, mm. but you'd like to keep that off for the next 20, 30, 40, 50 years, however long you're alive. Well, that's why a lot of times, you know, new clients don't really consider the aftermath of that because it's so exciting that they've lost this weight and that by all means necessary, but you know, as, as you waste down in your and you're looking at your body as like an overall like weight loss versus like like slowly and gradually doing this so you can maintain muscle mass and promote like the right type of signals to your bodies and keep that metabolism where it is. Um, you know, you're gonna be in a place where now we have to dig ourselves back out of a hole and start rebuilding and, and go through that whole process. Well, the, the, you know the funny part about losing body weight, losing body fat, is that everybody tends to want to see the scale go down when, I, even if you're 30 pounds overweight, see so you're 30 pounds overweight, I still don't want to see your scale go down that much because I can completely change your body composition. You can be the same weight and I can totally make your body look completely different. And that's a better, I think it's a better gauge to, if you're watching the scale weight, is and you're making good food choices and you're programming and you're training correctly. Good things are probably happening. There's yeah. probably if you're if you're eating. That's why all these numbers are so arbitrary, right? And like, it's tough because people want like tangible metrics to okay. So if I'm if I'm this many calories, I want it to be at this place, and it, it it depends. You know, it really depends on how your body's reacting. You know, on a daily basis, and you have to evaluate that. Yeah, I'm, I'm always looking for a pretty even exchange. Like that's a to me, it's a very nice, gradual, slow process. But it, it's the easiest as far as the restriction that you have to do, how hard you have to push. Is like I'm trying to every time I lose three or four pounds of fat, I've also added three or four pounds of muscle, and I'm trying to keep that exchange for as long as I can until I start to make major yep. moves. The other thing to keep in mind is that your water weight will show up as lean body mass. This is important to note. Like. If I lose a bunch of water and I test my body fat and then I take that percentage and multiply it times my body weight, if I lost a bunch of water, it can look like I lost some muscle mass. The reason why I'm making this point is if you the way you go in a deficit is by going really, really low carbohydrate and then you're testing your body fat and you're doing the math and you're like, wait a minute, it looks like I lost some body mass. Some of that was water and I've actually done this. I've actually had my, I've done this on myself where I've gained five pounds, six pounds by increasing my carbohydrates. And then when I test my body fat, it seems to be the same, but now it looks like I have five more pounds of, of lean body mass. So yeah. the scale is kind of a bad, you know, not the best way to, to measure these types of things. Next question is from Katie Gassman. Do you have any recommendations for someone coming off a six day a week, high volume training program? I'd love to get to the three to four day a week programming you all talk about, but I'm worried that I've screwed myself and there's no way I can come out of my programming without losing muscle and gaining a lot of fat. I started training about a year and a half ago for the first time ever and have been running six days a week from the start. Whew. Well, if you're six, over... So six days a week of lifting and six days a week of running? Is that yeah. what it says? Yeah. 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 If, a lot. If, you're, if you're over training, bringing it back, you'll actually build more muscle. Yep. Yeah. So... Even though you're she doing, want to hear that. even though you're doing more work now and burning manually, burning more calories now. If you go from bad programming to good programming, or at least programming that's not working well for you, and to programming that's more appropriate for you, you're going to put on more muscle and you're going to be in a better position. I've I've done this, I've done this a million times with men, especially. Yeah. Where I'll have guys that'll hire me, and they're doing these six day splits and they're pushing their body super, super hard and going to failure in every set. And I take them off that and I go three days a week, full body. And they look at me like I'm crazy. Like I'm going to lose all this muscle. I'm not doing, no, no, no. Try it out and see what happens. And it's like, boom, six pounds of muscle. It's allowed for that recovery to take place. And then their body just starts to really like perform better. And it's just like this catalyst. Well, this is what, you know, and Sal refers to this as the recovery trap, right? This is what happens to people is they're, they're training and moving and pushing so much that they're just their body's constantly trying to recover. It's trying to recover from the six days of running. It's trying to recover from the six days of weight training. It's like it's never fully recovering because it's always in recover mode. So it's not allowing it to really adapt and progress. And as scary as it may sound, personally, what I would do with this client now, of course, there's other variables. I don't know where her calories are at, and all that stuff would be taken into consideration. But let's just pretend 
like they're all at a healthy place and normal, I would. I'd cut her straight from six days a week of lifting down to like a MAPS anabolic program. And then what I would do since she's been running for six days a week. I think she's saying that she was lifting six days a week. And then at the last sentences, she's been running six days a week from the start. In other words, that's the program that she's been running the whole time. Not that she's running. So I don't think oh, she's saying she's, she's running, running and a, lifting. A program. Yeah. Oh. So I think she's just six days a week oh, of, of high volume training. On top of that. Yeah, no. <laughs> I was going to no, say no, no. it's a lot. Are you sure? Yeah. I think, you, am I reading that right? Yeah, like recommendations for someone coming off a six-day-a-week high-volume training program. And then the last sentence is, just to reiterate, look, I've been training for one and a half years ago for the first time ever and been running six days a week from the start. I think she means I've been running that program six from the days start. per week. Not running on top of it. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, that, so that's not as bad then. This no. shouldn't be that yeah. big of a deal anymore because I was a little worried if she was running six days on a week. On top of it. Yeah, it's not going to be that much that of a shell shock. Well, it might take a while to reverse out of that, right? But yeah, no, if you're lifting six days a week, I'd drop down to three days a week and follow MAPS Anabolic and don't be afraid if you see the scale go up one or two pounds because pro it's probably muscle you're building. Mm. You know, don't, that, that's the one thing. You're, mm -hmm. you're obviously cutting the amount of volume in half, you know, potentially. So, yeah, your calorie expenditure is going to be down a little bit, but then you're also going to probably have more strength for all your lifts, which then is going to send a louder signal to build muscle. And if you're still eating a little more, eating the same amount of calories with the less calorie expenditure, hopefully those good calories, and if you're consuming good calories, should go get prioritized to building muscle. Yeah, I, I would say another way you could do it too, I, I recommend what Adam said, but if you're afraid... You can also just do this slowly. You could take your six day a week, yeah, then five, then high volume training program, and before you cut a day, just cut the sets. So make your workouts, you know, a quarter shorter. So cut sets from every exercise. So instead of doing four sets of every exercise or whatever, do three sets or maybe drop an exercise per body part. And then the next phase of that would be to cut that down to five days a week or four days a week, and then go down to your three and see how you feel. But based on my experience, you go from the six day a week high volume training and go straight to a three, four day a week program, mm. you'll see r results, like good results, pretty quickly. And I like that better because even though you said you can go the other way, I think she'll see less and feel less of a difference. I do too. Yeah. Right? I do too. Like I think you just I switch think, it. Yeah. I think you'll be surprised when you go down to the three. Like, holy shit. Like, and, and you know what? Use that. Use those other three days. Like, because here's the thing, too. Like, I also respect this because this is like me where I, I like my routine. Like, when I've got in a rhythm of going to the gym six days a week, I don't like to break that because I think my body, just because my body needs to slow down and only mm -hmm. lift three days a week. So I still keep this routine. You still of, want to go to the gym six Right. Days a week. So I go to the gym and then just those other three days now become, so I put all that energy now into mobility. That's how, that's part of how I progressed my mobility so far in the last year was I still kept a six to seven day a week going to the gym type of regimen. I just wasn't lifting weights. I was going three, four times where I just walk on a treadmill for an hour, or I do mobility work for an hour, or I, I like do the a, mobility work, or I do a combination of the two of them. Like so, you know, I still if so if you're like that, I I can respect like wanting to keep that rhythm because some people struggle with that, and even myself, if I go from seven day a week guy to three, then what I end up doing is I play this game like, oh, I can go tomorrow. You know, I'll just go tomorrow because I, I don't need to lift today because I'm you know I've only got to lift three times this week, so I'll just go tomorrow. And then tomorrow turns into the next day, and then I'm I'm off my regimen, right? So, I think that if you're like that, that's what I would do is I would walk or do mobility work, and then just cut the lifting though down to the a maps anabolic program. You'd mm -hmm. be good. Next question is from Cellcarp. If you guys were on death row, what would it be for? Cool. And what would your last meal be? What are the options for death row? <laughs> How do you get on death row? Only, only you murders. have to do some terrible shit to get on death row. Shoot somebody in the you face. You basically have to kill people. Yeah. I don't think there's any other way to get on so, death row. So I guess or the, espionage. So the real question is, <laughs> uh, yeah. what would it take? Because obviously, if death row is only for murder, really, right? We have to do something so crazy like that. What would each one of us murder someone for? What would it take? Like so. Mm. Obviously, right away. Which Someone I'm, stole your shoes. Okay. Well, yeah. obviously, I think you, <laughs> you two right away are going to try and do burned the kid thing, which I don't think that's fair. No, no. How about yeah. this? That's right. not it's more so, fun so if we say what each. Anyway. If it's made, it's more fun if we guess what the other person would kill someone over. <sighs> would just okay. really get. Yeah. Like I feel like if somebody broke in your house and took all your shoes. <laughs> nah, they would probably just get a beating. Yeah, shoot. <laughs> I, I don't know if you'd kill them. Pistol whipped. If, yeah. if it was a thing like that, I have more attachment to my watches than I have my shoes. Do you really? Yeah, yeah. So if there was, if something were to like really 
break my heart. Do you, would or, you lose your mm. shit enough to? I don't think you purposely try to kill someone, but you you would on accident, right? If someone was like hurting your dog. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. That's like your kids for you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Like if I saw some guy like soccer kick my dog or some shit like that, oh, cool. <laughs> oh, <laughs> come over and soccer kick his face. You know for sure. Like, so yeah. yeah, if I saw somebody hurt hurt my dog or do something mean to the dogs like that, like you know malicious or or Katrina for that matter, you know. So I'm very protective of her. Yeah. So if mm. someone, but did, I don't think you'd go on death row for that. You know what I mean? I don't think they'd put you on death row for like, well, he was defending yeah. his dog. We're just gonna give him three months community service. <sighs> Because you know I mean? you're, like you're defending something. Yeah. I don't know. I, I feel like you'd be like uh, for something in, in terms of like liberty, you know, like uh, like some like oppressive regimes coming in and you're like making some last stand and you're like. I get put to death. Yeah, you get yeah. put to death. Well, oh, think yeah. of times I, mean, guys, I would be there The with most you, unglued you guys have ever, uh, the most unglued I think I've ever came on somebody. Oh, that sounded really bad. Ugh. The most. The most <laughs> Bunch of glue yeah, you know, said, flying out there. Yeah. The, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Freudian slip. All yeah. kinds of all kinds oh, of glue. Yeah. Very, very sticky. <laughs> I think the craziest I ever got was, uh, you know, I remember a kid that was wanting to fight me in high school, and he kept, like, he kept picking, kept fucking with me, and I didn't want to fight. I remember being like, I don't want to fight. I don't want to fight. I don't want to fight. And I remember, like, constantly doing that. And I remember inside having this battle, like, fighting this kid doesn't prove anything. There's no reason for me to fight this kid. I don't even have beef with this kid. Yeah. This kid just doesn't like... But you also I, don't uh, like so to annoying. feel like you're being pushed around. Right. right. But then I also don't like feeling like... Punked. like Exactly. Because I do feel like I have a very strong personality. I feel very confident in who I am. And I wasn't, it wasn't out of fear. It was that it was just wasn't the right thing to do. And so he kept making me feel that way. And to a point where I finally, okay, motherfucker, like that's, that's it. That's enough times. I've already told you no like five times. Like, and now you now it's it's getting to the point where I'm really angry. And I remember whooping the shit out of this guy. And so I don't remember ever feeling so angry to where I would where I literally I just whooped the shit out of some dude that kept trying to fight me all the time and I didn't want to, want to, want to. So something like that where because I feel like I have a very long fuse. Yeah. Like I have patience and if you and I, I have a lot of empathy for people. And I try and look at the best in everybody. And so there's not a lot of things that would make me just all of a sudden kill somebody or do something. You would have to be antagonized. I don't like to be mm -hmm. antagonized. Like, don't keep prodding at me and fucking with me. Like, don't fucking poke the bear. You poke the bear enough, and then eventually you're going to get bit. Yeah. yeah. I don't think that would send you to death row, though. <laughs> <laughs> what about the meal? What would you guys want to eat uh, your last meal? I mean, it's got to be cheese in it. You know what I mean? It's just cheese. Yeah, just a big block of cheese. Are yeah. you serious? Get no. out of here. No, no. it'd be, it'd be like a- lasagna. Uh, no, dude, like probably a deep dish pizza from, yeah. from Chicago. Yeah. Dude, you guys haven't had that yet, huh? I've never- Not in Chicago. Oh. I've had deep dish, but it's just- I've never had- I'm Some sure people are like, you know, partial to the New York style or the thin crust or whatever. I like them both. Because it's kind of like, I mean, it's a commitment. It's like a big ass yeah. pie. It's thick, bro. You know, and you have to no, eat it with a I've fork. Had, I've had Chicago style. I've never had been in Chicago yeah. and had Chicago pizza, but I've had Ch yeah. Chicago style pizza. It's unique. I sure. like, I it's like too, them. It's too heavy for me. Yeah, though. I prefer the thin I like, one, but yeah. I like them both. Yeah. yeah, they're both good. Now, as a kid, though, it was the other way around. See, as I got older, I couldn't handle that anymore. Like now, I mean, as an adult, I now have to have if I want pizza. I actually like the thinner, the, the, like, I like it like a saltine cracker, thin, like crusty, yeah. like hard. So it's like a cracker. And I like just a little bit of cheese and sauce on there because yeah. if it's overly done on that, where if it's thick and bready and a lot Heavy. of, so oh man, yeah. my stomach is just fucked. Yeah. It's great. You're going to die anyway. You know what I mean? So <laughs> at this point, yeah. Fuck. It's yeah, either that probably, or a steak, you know, like a really good steak with, with like a blue cheese crust. In fact, I probably yeah. would eat foods that would make my stomach bad because I'm dying anyway and I right. want the, they're gonna have to clean that shit up. Yeah. <laughs> you're gonna, oh, you're gonna pull that switch? Go for uh, it, buddy. Yeah. Yeah. Just blast them. Did you, did, Which did, I believe they do. I hear that, right? They really? they piss and shit themselves. Of yeah. course. Yeah. Yeah, would that's you part of death? What do you guys think of the of the death penalty? I mean, that's that's a loaded question. Yeah. yeah it, it depends <laughs> on the case, right? Like, give me a case example, and then well, I no, can I'm tell not going I, I mean, think. Well, here's the deal. Well, I, do I, you think we should have it? You know, I, that's the question. Like, do you think we I should- I still think we should be like cowboys and Indians back in the yeah. days where we just, we I all think, can carry guns and like, you, you fuck with someone too much, you might get shot, bro. That's it. We, you need to you know there's consequences. I mean, you I, know? Think, I think that's part of why we lost respect for other people was because of that. Yeah. I think we respect each other more. Yeah. You think, I think, you think yes, we respect- No dude. way, dude. Oh my no God, bro. Way, dude. Back then- People were hella polite. No, I, <laughs> hella polite. You, you watch know. too many movies. So yeah. you, you, yeah. If you were a Everybody woman- Everybody holstered up. Yeah. You know, you're if not you were a woman shit. walking through a freaking saloon, you think she was getting respected by a bunch of cowboys? No. 
I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, just, maybe because she they they wouldn't think she had a gun and they have their guns. Maybe yeah, I don't know. Yeah. No, I don't think so. Was it Annie Oakley? Yeah, yeah they're gonna fuck with yeah. Annie Oakley. I don't. See, here's I'll tell you why I'm like, I'm against the death penalty. Completely against it. Not because I don't think there are people who deserve to be killed. Because I definitely think, I think there are yeah. there are terrible people in the world like mass that, murders that should just not exist. I definitely think that. But the reason why I don't like the death penalty is because even if there's a point zero zero one percent that we're wrong, right, that's we've killed an innocent person and we've done it through the state and it's legal sure. and everybody and it's fuck that's dis, that's terrible and it's happened many times, yeah. many times that it, we put it executed people. Did you guys ever watch that movie Life of David Gale? No, David. Yeah. Oh, really? Uh. Uh-uh. Oh, Doug, pull that up on the screen. You got you to watch that. Really? I think it's David Gale. Life of David Gale. It's a Kevin Spacey film. Really good film. Hmm. It's about you. You should watch. Is it about this? Yes. Yes. Really, really good film. Because we've done this before. We've actually watched. executed people, and yeah. then years later, new evidence comes out. Like, oh, w- we killed the wrong person. What, that has happened. What a tragedy! Yes. Oh yeah. Oh, it's happened many Quite times. Quite a few times. Yeah. Well, think about it this way. Nothing's perfect. As good yeah. as our as as well designed as our law, you know, our justice system is, which it's not perfect at all, but it's definitely. You know, it's well, better than most. Our memory, yeah, just just based off of our memory and eyewitness accounts, like yep. there's always flaws. There in is, yeah. there is, and then there's also the moral. There's this also moral argument of like, it's wrong to kill, so we're gonna kill you. So right. what I think we should do because we, the problem with not killing them is that we're already filling up the, the prison so much they're wasted space. Well, right? well, actually, so I think we should have a little island. Okay. They, that, they did. It was called Alcatraz. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, no, no, but it needs to be further away. Doctor Murray right? needs yeah, to be even yeah. further away. And you don't need to. We don't need to have police cars. You just leave them all there. You know what I'm saying? Let them figure it out. Drop for it off. Swim. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, no. It's got to be far away. Bro. Then they'll develop their own society. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yes. Remember, uh, was it Escape We're under from attack. Escape from New York? <laughs> yes. Remember Escape, Escape from you New York? You dropped us off on this island generations ago. Right. <laughs> they just created a movie just right now. Govern themselves. Yeah. yeah. Let, them, let them govern themselves out there. That's... No, I don't I don't like that, man. I don't like, you know, executing people because then it's like, what if we're wrong? So what do you do with them? Mm. Put them in jail. You can't. We don't have room. What do you mean we don't we have gotta room? We got to kill off the bad ones. Yeah, make up, make room. You know why we don't have room? Because we, we throw, put people we, in jail for stupid shit. Yeah, for drugs. That's why. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. If there's, if you didn't hurt, if you didn't hurt anybody or steal anything, you don't need to go what, to jail. What percentage of people are in jail, Doug, for for drugs? Nonviolent. How about this? Nonviolent drug offenses. That's yeah. what you need to look up, because you could also have drug offenses that were violent, like. You know, I beat you up for your drugs or something. Yeah, like but that. wouldn't that be under there as a uh, assault and in, in underneath there? It would, it, it would be. They would also have drug charges on top of it. I oh. think. Yeah. Uh, mass incarceration. The whole pie. Thirty-eight percent of prisoners should not be in prison. Well, who said gets thirty-nine? I don't know. Time magazine said that apparently. Yeah. It's a pretty big chunk. Oh wait, here we go. It's a pretty big chunk. We'd have to do a little deeper diving. Yeah, I mean. It definitely is a. It, it's Damn. there and it exists. There's like one point three people, one point three million people in prison in state prisons. One point one point three million people, bro. America has the largest percentage of our population in prison over any other country, I think, in the world. Hmm. The only problem I have with that statistic, Dude, when that people is say a, that, that's a lot of people. It is. Mm-hmm. It is. That's a lot of people in prison. You know. You know when this. Yep. You know when this number started to soar. When, when we started having these like uh, tough like politicians passing these like oh, the, tough on the crime third laws, strike yeah, stuff? yeah, yeah, we're mm. like like you know minimum sentencing laws. Those are yeah. the ones. We're like if you get caught with dr- this drug, the there is no minimum. There's a minimum sentence of a year. Like no matter what, you get at least a year in prison, mm-hmm. and that just exploded the the prison population. I tell you what, you want to change prison. First of all, don't throw people in jail for not unless they hurt someone or steal from someone or or, or damage property. Don't throw them in, in jail. So eliminate victimless crimes. No no need to have people in jail for that. And number two, change it so it's not like I think we think of if prison is like put them in there to punish them, and I get that too. But yeah. do we want? Don't we want to rehab you want to them? Rehabilitate them. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Put them to like like constructive like uh, give them some kind of skill set so that way they come yeah, back but to is society it, isn't the whole system structured as a money making machine where it's like you're it's designed to once you're in we're keeping you in and you're gonna when you go out the likelihood of you well, coming prisons, back what is the likelihood once you serve time of you coming back to prison again it's, it's really depends, high depends but it's sure pretty it's high, high because isn't it? they yeah. can't get like jobs if you have Nobody's a felony hire you that's what I'm saying it's you like, have a felony it's like it's their, a, their, their return rate mm-hmm. I mean if, if yeah, the and by the way if the true desired outcome of jail is to to 
change these people to or to correct their bad behaviors, right. is it really working? Yeah, no, no, not it's all, not. No, it's right? not at all. Put them what? all on. A, you don't like the island idea? No, that's what. <laughs> why, why is that flawed? <laughs> what do you? What do they just dump them on an island? Well, yes. And what are they going to do there? Make their own society? Bro, you okay? You know, remember those camps that kids used to go to when they're really troubled and shit? Yeah, but that's a. You want okay? So you want them to be on an island with people helping run it, or just drop them off? Drop them off. Well, there's no kid camp like that. No, yeah. <laughs> yeah. They do these camps where they take these kids out and like, and they get like a. But they don't a, leave the kids by themselves. Yes, they get a Swiss Army knife and it's like you got to fucking find your food. You got to figure out. You got to get shelter. What the you, hell camp is this? Yeah, dude. It, they you, leave the kid alone for like oh, two hardcore. weeks. Yeah, it's a hardcore thing. My, I had a girlfriend there. Are you sure? They kidnap them in the middle of the night too. Yeah, but there's people there that there's adults there that take like them through. Supervising yeah, somewhere. and make it. It's hard. No. But they don't just take your kid. Well, okay, and so as a kid, Who the my, my, my point, kid? my point of sharing that. Okay, okay, we're getting into the details here, but Dad, the, you wanted me to die, didn't you? The, what are you talking about, son. The point of that, <laughs> though, is what it what it teaches them is to value and appreciate all these things yeah. that you, you wouldn't have. Now, sticking them on an island like that, where they got to fucking hunt and search for things and find they'll and die. build, and they'll die. Yeah, some of them will. Most of them. Yeah, some of them will. And then they'll eat. the They dead were going to get the death penalty anyways. At least this way, they have a chance. Yeah. And, mm. and I mean, I, don't know, I, I like it. You don't like that? No. Why? No. Because they can it's... plot and conspire and come back and kill us all, bro. That's yeah. going to be stuck on an island, bro. <laughs> They'll make their way off. That's inhum- Humans are ingenuitive. That's dude. inhumane, bro. No, I wouldn't do that. That's terrible. Really? That would never fly either. No. People would be flying drones over the island to see what's happening. Oh, yeah. looks like they uh, looks like they discovered electricity. Right. <laughs> like, Here they go now. Yeah. yeah. Oh, there's someone getting raped. I like that. No, idea. I'm, I'm not. <laughs> No, I think, uh, and it, this is what one of the reasons why I think minimum wage laws should be eliminated because people get out of prison with a felony. Nobody wants to hire them. If there were jobs where yeah. you're making four bucks an hour, you know, and you're a company that wants to pay that, the people that are going to get that kind of a job are people like felons and who have to build themselves way back, you know, back up, yeah. back up the ladder. So it would give them more of an opportunity. But yeah, anyway. Last meal, and if we were on death row, I guess we fucked that question up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I don't know. Well, it's kind of that. a tough one, anyways, because it's like we wouldn't be on death row. There's nothing that could have got us there. Oh, the only thing could is murder. I can't see any of us murdering somebody no. or something like that. Yeah. But I, you know, last meal, I didn't answer mine. I'd do a big ass filet mignon and then followed up with a a pound of uh, mint chip ice cream from Ooh, uh, Thrifties. Thrifties, that's right. Wow. Thrifties shit ice cream. That's right. Pazuki. Oh, <laughs> forgot to add that. Check this out. Maps Anabolic 50% off mindpumpmedia.com. Also, don't forget we have free guides. There's like 12 guides that are absolutely free. If you go to mindpumpfree.com, you can get any of these guides and they cost you nothing. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now, plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump.